Bimatoprost and Lantoprost are drugs that are used to treat acute glaucoma and ocular hypertension by lowering interocular pressure. Both treatments belong to the prostaglandin analog class of pharmaceuticals which functions by increasing the outflow of fluid from the eye. So how are these two medications potential alternatives to minoxidil? Well, in the case of bimatoprost, it is used in the brand medication Latisse to help grow eyelashes. Furthermore, there are studies that show lantoprost having similar hair growth effects in vivo. First, let's start with bimatoprost and its influence on scalp hair for treating various forms of alopecia. We will be focusing more so on the androgenetic side of things. The study Bimatoprost, a prostamide-related glaucoma treatment, offers a unique method for treating scalp alopecias by Karzan G. Adir and their colleagues, discovered that the medication Bimatoprost, which is routinely used to treat glaucoma, has the potential to be used for hair loss treatment as well. The study's main conclusion is that Bimatoprost lengthens the antigen phase of the hair growth development cycle, resulting in increased hair growth. The follicles were tested in organ culture, which is the method where hair follicles are removed from the body and placed in a culture medium to observe growth and behavior. This allows researchers to study the effects of different factors on hair growth and understand the mechanisms underlying the process. In this particular study, the researchers used human scalp hair follicles in organ culture and rodent hair follicles to study the effects of bimatoprost, a prostamide F2 alpha analog on hair growth. One of the primary reasons for the lengthening of the antigen phase is due to the activity of the prostanoid receptor, especially the FP receptor, which is located in the scalp hair follicles. Pimatoprast binds to this receptor, causing a rise in intracellular calcium levels, as well as alterations in gene expression. These modifications are what cause hair to grow with Pimatoprast. The researchers also discovered that the effect of Pimatoprast on hair development is dose-dependent, with the highest results obtained at concentrations ranging from 100 to 1,000 nanomolars. They also utilized a prostamide receptor antagonist to discover if it would prevent the impact of bimatoprast on hair growth. And sure enough, it did, suggesting that the mechanism of action is by a receptor-mediated response. The term receptor-mediated response refers to a drug's ability to engage with certain receptors present within the hair follicles, and this connection results in a specific reaction, in this case, an increase in hair growth. So, in other words, the researchers believe that the effects of bimatoprost on the hair growth cycle are a direct result of its capacity to interact with particular receptors present within the follicles, rather than through indirect effects on surrounding tissue or blood supply. This was demonstrated, as previously stated, by employing a protein that blocked the prostamide receptor, rendering bermatoprost ineffective. So this strongly suggests that bermatoprost needs the prostamide receptor in order to induce hair growth effects by lengthening the antigen phase of the hair development cycle. The study also included p-values to reflect statistical significance of the findings. P-values are metrics that suggest the likelihood that the findings were due to chance. P-values less than 0.05 are deemed statistically significant. In this case, the results were statistically significant, lending credibility to the findings. So this study gives strong evidence that bimatoprost could be an effective remedy for hair loss. The specific mechanism by which bimatoprost stimulates hair growth has to be further researched. However, the findings presented give new prospects for the treatment of hair loss. The next step would be to undertake further clinical trials to investigate the safety and efficacy of bimatoprost for treating hair loss in humans. Now, in this next study by Elric Plume, Playtappy, and colleagues, it investigates the efficacy of a 24-week topical therapy with Lantiprost 0.1% on hair growth and pigmentation in healthy volunteers with androgenetic alopecia. Androgenetic alopecia is a frequent cause of hair loss that affects men and women. Lantiprost is a drug that is primarily used to reduce pressure inside the eye in persons with glaucoma or ocular hypertension. Now, like mentioned before, it works in a similar way to Bimanoprost the active ingredient in Latisse. This particular study comprised of 16 males with moderate androgenetic alopecia who were separated into two groups. One group administered Lantiprost 0.1% 
to two tiny portions of their scalp, whereas the other group applied a placebo. The trial was randomized and double-blind, which means that neither the participants nor the researchers knew which therapy the subjects were getting. The study indicated that, at 24 weeks, the group that used Lantipros 0.1% had an enhanced hair density compared to the baseline and placebo group. While the results of the study indicate that Lantipros may have a potential as a treatment for hair loss, the small sample size means that further studies with even larger and more diverse populations are needed to confirm these findings, the effectiveness of Lantipros for treating hair loss, specifically androgenetic alopecia. Additionally, it also has limitations in terms of the group it was tested on, just moderate androgenetic alopecia in young males. Thus, it may not be generalizable to other types or degree of hair loss or even to women. Thus, the results should be regarded with care. So that's pretty much it for this video. I was interested because I saw these drugs talked about uh, two years ago when I was looking into hair loss as I was dealing with it myself. And there were people that were using Latisse on their scalp instead of minoxidil because they weren't responding to minoxidil properly. Um, my understanding though is that when you use Latisse and either Lantipros or whatever Bimatoprost type formulation, it does have a risk of darkening your scalp. And there was an interesting point in one of the papers that I read where they mentioned patients that had blue eyes or light eye colors that were using these ocular drugs to treat their glaucoma or ocular hypertension experienced a darkening of iris pigment. So they went from like light color eyes, like blue eyes, green eyes, or whatever, to getting brown eyes. Now, uh, maybe that's what you want, right? <laughs> but um, it is uh, a symptom, uh, dark darkening of um, pigmentation on your scalp, or wherever you apply this particular drug. Um, should you do that, that is. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope it was interesting enough for you to stick around, and maybe I'll do another video later on this particular topic. Remember not to take risks trying these drugs on yourself, um, but hey, I can't control you. So, peace out.